Good morning. Thank you for coming out this morning. It's cold and windy and snowy. And as I think about the reason we're here, because of my Uncle Cecil's death. Totally unexpected. We had no idea. Uh, and that's the way life can be. It, sometimes it's easier when there's, when there's a warning for a, a while. That's not always easy either. And uh, we, don't, we don't get to choose those things. Uh, so this morning we come to, to honor his life. We come to honor the family and give our sympathies to grieve together. And so I want to thank you for coming. Let's pray. Lord, this morning we come. We want to thank you for knowing all things. And even though we don't understand, we trust you. And so I ask for your favor, your blessing as we meet together this morning. I know that there would be many others that would like to be here, but because of the weather, they uh, chose not to. And for some, it's probably best. And so I pray, God, that you'd also comfort them because I know that there are some who uh, really wanted to come and just felt like they can't. So, God, I pray for your comfort, and I thank you for your love in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to share some stories that I remember about Cecil, and then I'll... Uh, Cecil was involved in in uh, handing out a lot of CDs. How many of you have seen some of those trucker CDs that Cecil had? Okay, well, I'm going to give you an opportunity after the service to take one or two of those because I'm going to make them available if you'd like them. And he told me in November, he said, well, no, it was October. He told me, he says, well, the, he, he said, the, the song on that, their theme song is not a Christian song. He says it's a, it's a country song, but he says it's not a bad song. He says that's just their theme song. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the sound guys play that later on. And, and you'll know what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about when I talk about the CDs. But it's, those CDs usually have either a testimony of somebody uh, who gave their life to the Lord or else uh, a sermon. Or the first one I listened to was a singing group. And I was looking for the theme song, and I didn't find the theme song on the first CD I picked up, so they may not all have it. I thought they all did, but I hadn't listened to that one. So I think one of my earliest memories of Cecil was when Cecil and Morris, you remember that you had a little electric race car track upstairs at Grandpa's. It had two tracks. I think it was a figure eight track. And I don't know how old I was, not very old, maybe six, and I thought I was old enough to be careful with that thing, and they weren't always so sure, and I look back, and I, I'm not sure either, <laughs> but, but you let me play with that, and, uh, and I know that there was times I didn't slow down enough, and that some of the cars flew off the track, and so I'm sorry, <laughs> but it, it meant a lot to me that you even allowed me to play with that, and that made me really feel big I think and uh, but I know that it probably wasn't the smartest move on your on your part but uh, it doesn't seem like as big a deal now but back then it felt like a big deal to a, a six-year-old and they lived with grandpa's upstairs there where Serena's house is now along C Avenue and I remember I remember when when Cecil got married so Barb I, re I remember that and and I remember when Jason and, and Terry were born. I wasn't that much older. I don't know. What year were you born, Jason? 76. 76. I was born at the very end of 65. I just had a birthday. So uh, we're about 10 years apart, and that's about how much difference it is between Morris and I, probably. And so uh, I, re I remember those things. Those just, it's just memories that I have. And, and I know some of you were think, trying to figure out, now wait a minute, who, how, is, how, does, how does Cecil fit into all this Bender family? Because my, my dad was the oldest in his family, and his dad, Ivan, was the oldest in that family, and they were children of Ira. I'm not, you didn't come for a genealogy class, I'm sure. But, but since, since Cecil and Morris were the youngest, 
And since I was older, I mean, it, sometimes people were thinking that we were cousins or they weren't quite sure. And, and Ruby is not here this morning and her children told her she needs to stay home. But she's only like five years, four or five years older than my dad and, and she's an aunt to my dad. So they kind of grew up as cousins. So Cecil is my uncle in case you're wondering. And, uh, and so we have the family here. I, I, I remember, I don't see Brian. Is Brian here? This Brian's not here. But I remember uh, Cecil telling several stories, one of them uh, in the past 10 years. He would tell, he told me, he says, yeah, he said, I'd tell people, he says, I've got two nephews in prison, and I'm proud of them both. <laughs> he said, one of them's a chaplain and the other's an officer. And, <laughs> and, and you can almost hear him say it, probably. And he made sure I knew that he was proud of that, you know. But, and I also remember that uh, when we, uh, he told me probably four times at least this story, because he knew I was a preacher and a chaplain, and he says, yeah, he said there was, there was this circuit riding preacher, and he would go from one, one church to another, and, and whoever was there, he would preach a sermon, and then he'd get on his horse, and he'd go to the next place. And, and he said he got to this place one time, and there was only one man there. And so the farmer that was there, he said, well, he had a preacher ask him, he said, well, should I, should I preach? And he says, well, he says, if I go out and feed my cows and one cow shows up, I feed it. The preacher said, okay. So he preached a sermon, preached his heart out, and after the sermon, shook his hand. He says, what do you think? He said, well, if only one cow shows up, I don't feed them the whole load. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> so I... <laughs> I, re I remember that because I heard that story, and I remember about the second and third time I could, I could, I could, I could knew, I knew the story, but he, he told it to me again, and so I, re I remember that about Uncle Cecil. I mean, <laughs> uh, and I remember when we were still in Alabama. I'm not sure. I think I don't know how many of, or if all of his siblings came to visit us. Was it about five years ago? I don't know how long ago it's been. I uh, don't remember the occasion, if it would have been maybe one of my dad's retirement things. I don't know if it was the retirement party or not. But they were there and visited us, and, and Cecil was talking about the Lord. He was talking about the Bible, and, and I, that, was, that was not really what I would think of when I thought about Cecil. And I, I said, Cecil, I says, are you born again? And so he, he started telling me what had happened, and he had gone through a very difficult time in his life just recently, and he says, uh, I was very bitter and angry. He said, I was really angry. And he said, I could not sleep for three days. He said, I couldn't sleep. I wanted to sleep, I couldn't sleep. And he says, you cannot function if you cannot sleep for three days. And he says, you can't. And, and he says, but I couldn't sleep. He says, finally, he said, after the third day, he said, I got on my knees and I asked God to forgive me. And I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking he told me that about five years ago. And he says, I went to bed and slept. And I don't remember exactly. It was at least 17 hours before he woke up. And he says, the bitterness was gone. The hatred was gone. And he knew God had done something in his life. And uh, so he was, he was sharing that with me. And, and he said, at that point, he said, I'm not where I want to be with, with the Lord. But uh, and he, just was, he was just honest. And so I appreciated that about him. And so as I think about, <clears throat> I think about Cecil in that light, and I know that, that uh, he drove for many people, drove Amish, and I don't know how many states. Jason, you might know. How many states has he driven to? Or Terry, do you remember? I don't know. <laughs> all of them? Not all of them. All but four. Really, all but four states, driven a lot of places. And, and I know he came, I should have brought one of those CDs. I gave my CD to the sound guys. I don't have the CDs with me, but he came across these CDs that were in the truck stops. They were free, and people could pick them up. And I know that uh, they, they must have ministered to him because he'd pick them up, and, and he'd, he'd also give them out, and he had contact with the people uh, that made him. In fact, uh, Chaplain Rayburn from Illinois, uh, I contacted him and asked him if he found out that Cecil passed away. And, and so he recognized the name and him. 
and uh, I didn't expect him to come today because it's not a very good traveling time, but that was something that Cecil enjoyed was passing out these CDs, and they had testimonies of people that gave their lives to the Lord or had sermons that the chaplain preached or others or singing groups, and so he would pass these out freely, and uh, I don't know how many of those CDs went through his hands, but I would guess probably thousands of them. <laughs> and uh, I brought a stack of them, and, and I'm going to let you help yourself to them. Uh, after, after the service, I'll put them out on a table. Just, just take one or two of them until everybody has an opportunity, and if there's still some and you want more, just take them until they're gone. But uh, I know he, he drove all over, and I know he didn't drive an 18-wheeler, but he was going down the highway. And... Uh, here in a few minutes, I'm going to let them play the, the theme song, and you'll understand a bit more, because Cecil was also a member of the Cowboy Church, and he had talked about that. And somebody told me that on Facebook, you know, that, that you know, they'd, they'd found out about it or whatever, and I and, uh, told the family that I'm not on Facebook, except I do have my sister, and she's pretty special, but she's my only, my only person that I am on Facebook with, and... I'll make a confession. I, I made a. I got Facebook because I needed. I needed. Uh, I needed a Mexican restaurant. I needed to. I needed to know what they had for sale, and I had to go on Facebook during COVID to get it, and so I got it. And <laughs> no. anyway, but he would go. He would go down the highway, and I'm sure that that also made a connection with him. And so uh, he, he bought a lot of ponies and horses and liked to train them, and then he'd sell them. And I remember stories that, you know, he, he found two ponies out in Montana because he took his horse trailer up there to, because an Amishman he hauled had horses for sale, and, and he might come back with none or he might come back with more than he went with, or, and he'd sell them in, in uh, Ohio or Kentucky or somewhere. And then that was part of his business. He just enjoyed horses and ponies, and, and that was just that was Cecil. He enjoyed his farm that he had uh, in Missouri, and his chickens, his goats. Do uh, you ever get a milk goats, Terry? No. Wow, you're lucky. No, I don't know if you're lucky or not. <laughs> but but, but uh, those are things that Cecil did. He enjoyed that, and I, I thought the, the little poem uh, in the front of inside the obituary was appropriate for for what he and what he enjoyed. If I had five dollars for every horse sale Cecil attended, we, I could take you all out for for a pretty good meal, I think. Uh, several times, <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, but he would he would listen to these driving, and and he would let some of the people he had with him uh, listen to him as well. So that was that was his that was his way of 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 sharing the gospel, I think. That was what he did. And so Lonesome Road Ministries or Channel One Ministries, uh, I'm not sure. I think there are maybe two different ministries. I'm not exactly sure how it is, but they're on the same, same CD. Uh, you'll see them on the cover together. And they advertise, you know, a clean talk radio and Chaplain Gary Rayburn uh, with, with other chaplains. And so I remember uh, I already shared about my cousin. Lewis didn't did I share with you I shared with the family in the in the fellowship hall I, care, I didn't care about Lewis Lewis Wagner my second cousin he was here last July and when he found out Cecil passed away he said well was he at your place on July the 4th I couldn't remember right offhand until we, we thought about it a little bit as a family and yes he was there and so Lewis said yeah I got a whole I said he gave you several CDs and you know he said he gave me a handful and and so he he remembered and he said well he was all excited about that too and that was Cecil. He did. Do you, want, do you have that available? Just go ahead and, and, and play it until, and he'll interject a little bit and share what's on the CD. And then after that, I think I'll let you shut it off. Chasing that old white line I've been on the road so 
long I've lost track of time Now it don't matter where I'm going I just gotta drive I have the white line fever Till the day that I die I said, hey, hey friends, this is Gary Rayburn of Lonesome Road Ministries and we've got an awesome program for you I know you're going to enjoy it today and you're going to want to get more copies of this so give us a call 618-383-2107 or log on to lonesomeroad.org or you can email me at gary.lonesomeroad at gmail.com We look forward to hearing from you. Now sit back, listen, and enjoy today's program from Lonesome Road Ministries Church on the Road. Give us a call. We look forward to hearing from you. I get those wheels to turn in. So now you know what I'm talking about if you haven't heard the CDs. So <clears throat> I've asked uh, Floyd Helmuth, pastor, to, if he would come and read the obituary. Cecil and I are first cousins, and he was born a little over a year after I was, so I'm 69 and he was 68. Cecil Wayne Bender was born October the 18th, 1954 in Washington, Iowa, the son of Ivan and Maddie H. Miller Bender. He attended Snake Hollow Rural School. He was united in marriage to Barb Watkinson in 1976. The couple had two boys, Jason and Terry and later divorced. Cecil worked at the Kelowna Cheese Factory and Concrete Walls, and after moving to Macon, he was a driver for the Amish. Cecil loved ponies, being with his family, spending time on his land, and playing marbles and euchre. Survivors include his two sons, Jason Bender, Mindy Howe of Kyoto, Terry Bender, Shannon Wiegard of uh, Maringo, eight grandchildren, Lexi and Kaylee, Miles, Maxon's, Maxon, Mason, I'm sorry, Max, Mallory, Maddie, and Marcus. Special friend Arlene and five siblings, Marvin, married to Emma Bender of Kelowna, Rufus Bender of Kelowna, Ezra Bender of Macon, Missouri, Serena Zarnik of Kelowna, and Morris Bender of Kyoto, and a number of cousins and nieces and nephews. Preceding Cecil in death were his parents and one sister, Esther Bell. Cecil W. Bender, 68, of Macon, Missouri, died Thursday, December the 15th, 2022, as a result of injuries suffered in an automobile accident. A general memorial fund has been established. And also, just for all of you, the family would like to extend their sincere appreciation to everyone for the many acts of kindness, love, and support shown to them at this time of loss. Thank you for coming. I remember, thank you, thank you for sharing that. I remember when Cecil worked out the chicken farm. Did you work there, Morris, at the chicken farm too? Gathering eggs, west of town? No. No? Worked you worked at Country Lane. So I remember Cecil would sometimes, as a young boy, take me along, and I thought that was great. He let me even push the little button that would do the vacuum on a whole flat full of eggs. You pick them up, put them on a flat. That was big stuff for, a, for an 8- and a 10-year-old, I suppose. But uh, he let me do those things. I remember stories. He would tell stories when he worked at the cheese house. I mean stories you don't even know if you'd want to know if you ate cheese. <laughs> <clears throat> like rolling in barrels or vats. or I don't know what all they did. I, I know, I, they did clean them uh, very good, I think. But I heard stories like that. Uh, and he would bring cheese curds to grandpa's, and so that was good enough for me. All right. Well, I, 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 believe that, uh, I believe that Cecil would like for me to share the gospel message with you. That was, uh, I believe that it was something that was close to his heart after he uh, repented of his sins. And, and the gospel message is found in the Bible, and gospel means good news. That's good news. And so... Uh, but first, there's bad news. And, and the Bible says that we are all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and I testify to that. I mean, 
It's true. We have all sinned. All of us have, and, and so God's not surprised at that. Uh, and when, when we sin against a holy God, uh, it doesn't sound good, maybe not the right way to say it, but he pays us for it. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I get wages for the place where I work. For what I do, and I don't want wages for sin. I don't. I don't want those kind of wages. So, I would rather have the wages that come from a life that that pleases the Lord. The, the you know, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and uh, so much better. And and I think about those. The words are found in Romans in chapter three and verse and chapter six. So they're quite opposite, and so. Uh, there's no there's no comparison almost between those wages. So how do we get eternal life? How do we get those wages instead of the death reward, the death wages? And I think probably the most probably the most familiar verses in the Bible, or maybe if I pick out one, is probably John three sixteen. Probably because it's loaded. It says, "For God so loved the world." that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So if I put it in a nutshell, I can't understand. We think about, we think about when Jesus rose from the dead as being the biggest miracle. But how can God, and as what we, what we read in the Bible, Jesus had been in heaven before he ever was on earth. How can, talking about a miracle, how can God somehow become a baby? How can he reduce himself to such a fragile little body? I don't know. Uh, my nephew, Kevin, just had a little baby. His wife just had a baby here Thanksgiving, the day before. Tiny. How could Jesus, being God in heaven, how could he come to earth? That's a miracle. I can't explain that. How could he do that? Why did he do that? I know now why. But how would, why did he want to become so much like us before he died for our sins? I think he wanted to experience what we experience. I think he wanted to know what it was like. And the best way, I guess, was to live in a body like we have he experienced friends dying he experienced having a bad cold I think he experienced a lot of things that life offers uh, and the Bible says he was tempted in all points like we are yet without sin and he was perfect and, and only God could do that because we can't we can, we're not perfect and and so when, when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and we celebrate that at Christmas time, the first, you know, when Jesus was born. That was not the beginning of Jesus, but it feels like it to us because we think that way in our minds. You know, we just think about birth and we think about death, but Jesus was before that. And that's, that's a huge miracle that he was able to leave heaven and come to earth. And then he lived here for 33 years, approximately, and shared the good news about salvation. He lived it. He died for our sins. Because a holy God cannot just wink at sin and say it's okay. There has to be some kind of penalty for sin. And Jesus took it. So I'm thinking, well, could I have died for my own sin? I mean, it would be fairer. Would it even the score? No. But if it did, I'd still be dead. You know, but Jesus, Jesus took that penalty that we had because of our sin that was against the holy God, and he, he said, I'll die in their place. And because he was perfect, God our Father accepted that penalty, and that was Jesus' death on the cross. Cruel punishment. Uh, didn't deserve it, but he took it for us. 
Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And because it's for with the, with the heart, it's, it's deep inside. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And uh, salvation, we talk about being saved, and that just means that we have been saved from the penalty of our sin. That's what salvation is. And if we confess our sins, then God is willing to forgive us. Amazing. It's amazing. How can it be gone? I think that's why Cecil, once he repented of his sins, that's why he could sleep. Because there's a peace that came over him. It's just, I can't, I can't explain the peace that God gives from, from day to day. Uh, I guess I've been, I've experienced it so long, I think I take it for granted. But it's a blessing. That's, that's the good news. Is the big, in, in a nutshell, the good news is that Jesus took our place. Excuse me. And that's why he came. There's one thing that he asks of us when we, when we come to him for forgiveness of sins. He asks that we surrender our lives to him, to his lordship. And so when he's a lord, then we, then we obey him. And he asks that we do that. Sometimes it can be hard. He asks us to do things we don't want to do. But he also gives us the strength and ability to do what he asks us to do. I remember, I remember knowing that when I, when I said, Lord, I want you to forgive my sins and be my Lord. And then I was thinking, but I don't know what he's going to ask of me, and I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Somebody said, yep, that's like an amen, I think. <laughs> but you know, it wasn't my first choice to be a pastor. It wasn't my first choice to be a chaplain. It wasn't my first choice for a number of things. But God's always been with me, and, he's, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that God has called me. Uh, he's my Lord, and I want to obey him. So that can be the tough part sometimes, but it's not a hard trade. It's not a bad trade. It's a very good trade. And uh, I don't know if it's fair to call it a trade. Uh, it's not like we trade one thing, but to, to trade my life of sin to get God's peace, that, that's a good deal for me. And uh, I've experienced that. And that's what God can do, you know, and, and uh, it's what Jesus calls being born again. It's a new life. It's a new life. It's different. It's turning around from the way I used to, to think and live and going the way that God wants me to. So not always easy. I mean, my flesh, this, this body of mine, I still, I still have a tendency to sin, and I'll always have that. Uh, but I am so thankful for God's forgiveness when I submit to that and, and confess those sins. God can do that. Does he love us? Yes, he does. Uh, and I think about, well, when we have eternal life in heaven, when we have that option, what if we don't? What if we don't take that option? Then the other option the Bible talks about is hell, and that's scary. Don't like that option. Uh, he didn't make hell for people. The Bible says he made it for the devil and his angels. But it does say that those who don't trust in him uh, will go there. And so he doesn't want us to, and that's why Jesus came. That's why he made it possible for us to have our sins forgiven and to be right with God, to not have anything against, our, uh, against God. God can do that. And as Cecil testified, he asked God to forgive his sins, and God did. Uh, took away that anger, took away that revenge, and those feelings that he had, and he can do it for you. For God so loved the world, that's everybody, that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I would, 
I would say if you haven't done that, I want to challenge you to think about that. Uh, give your life to the Lord. Don't wait until it's too late. When Cecil had that accident, he wouldn't have had time at that point to make things right with God. It happened too fast. I remember a man who was our neighbor in Alabama who gave his life to the Lord 10 days before he died. That was cutting it pretty close. And uh, had a, an adult daughter that lived at home yet at that point and just found out last week that she gave her life to the Lord now. And what a blessing. I mean, uh, it was a struggle for, for her to, to do that. Uh, and I think it's a struggle because it is giving up control to let God control and say, I want you to do this. And, you know, it's like you know, sometimes we don't want to do that. It's more scary than anything. And I think the devil probably tries to make it more scary than it, way far more scary than it really is. Because it's a blessing to serve the Lord. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. So uh, we don't have to fear judgment if we're ready to meet the Lord. So the choice is yours. No one can make that decision for you. I can't make that decision for you. But... Uh, I challenge you. That's the, that's the gospel in a nutshell. We need the Lord. We need him. We have a little time. I, I feel like I'm done sharing what I want to share. And I don't know if some of you would like to share anything about Cecil uh, that spoke to you. I'll give you an opportunity if you'd like. I'm not sure which story is right between Serena and Morris, but uh, one time when the boys were young, someone brought a horse upstairs. Now, can you guys tell me what's going on with that? I don't know the right story. <laughs> they took the horse in the house <laughs> upstairs. Morris, were you too too young to remember that? Yeah. No. Okay. In the back door of the stairs, across the hall, down the front stairs, up the front. Was that at Grandpa's? Who who shouldn't have? That was over in Wilmington. That was in Wilmington. <laughs> Instead of a car track. I know they blamed freedom for it, but I didn't know. <laughs> Oh, he blamed Serena? No, he said that we, we were joking it was his granddaughter oh. who dropped the pony in the house. But, you know. Did you? Did you bring it in or did Grandpa bring it in? He did. He did. <laughs> was it Cecil the first time too? Yes. And you. And you, okay. <laughs> okay. A pony. Okay. There are some houses I don't think I'd like to have a horse yeah. stepping in. That, that was a big house. Okay. It was right next to the schoolhouse. Okay. There's a lot of fun among the Bender family. Yeah, there can be. You were a good sister. You took quite a bit. Still does. <laughs> Still does. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got that cleared up. Do you know who it was now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's going to be different. Life's going to be different. Uh, Jason and Terry, especially for you, life's going to be different for you, grandchildren. Grandpa's not here. Uh, you'll have a lot of memories. Uh, a lot of those are good memories. So that's a blessing. I thought about it. Yesterday was the first day of winter. So the, the shortest amount of daylight hours. And so starting today, we have a little bit more, I don't know, is it a minute longer daylight hours than yesterday or not? Uh, seasons change and life changes as well with it. Life changes and uh, it's basically, uh, we can't control a lot of those changes, but we can control 
how we respond to them. And we can control on, on, our, on our own personal relationship with the Lord. We can control those things. And so I want to extend my sympathies again, especially to the family. I'm so sorry. I know it's it's hard on all of us, but Ezra, you lived with him for a long time, and it's going to be hard for you too. And I give you my sympathies, and Serena, my dad, Morse, Rufus. Yeah. Cecil was full of fun. He was full of life, and uh, I have a lot of good memories. And it was so much. It was more special. Uh, for me as a Christian when I found out, you know, his commitment to the Lord and, and uh, seeing that I didn't have a lot of time with him in the last five years, but I'd see him occasionally. I'd see him two or three times a year since we moved to Kelowna. Not often, but uh, always had a zest for life. And I believe you love the Lord, and I know he did. I will end with a closing prayer and and I know that uh, I had told them about 11.45. It's not quite that late yet as far as the meal. But you are all welcome to stay for the meal. Uh, they prepared it. If you don't stay, we're going to have leftovers. And uh, so I invite you to if you can. Let's pray. Father, uh, it's hard to say goodbye to Cecil. It's, it's difficult. Uh, if we can't see his body here this morning, that makes it probably not as real. And yet you know our thoughts. And I thank you for the memories that we have that are good. And I pray for comfort for the family, including myself. I thank you for that. Lord, uh, help us not forget but to just be reminded again and to remember the love that you have for, for each of us. Enough love that you made it as easy for us as, <laughs> I guess, as possible. And I thank you for that. Lord, uh, I do thank you for the food that, uh, that the kitchen committee, the service committee, has, has taken the time to prepare. And would you give us strength uh, from that food, bless them for their efforts, God. And as we as we say goodbye uh, to each other uh, as the day goes on, Lord, would you direct our steps, our life? God, lead us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.